Hello, and welcome to the channel. My name's Teeter, and today we're checking out Core Keeper in 2023. And I just realized that my <laughs> season might be set to Halloween, but you know what? That's okay. Let's we'll have kind of funny looking characters. If you've never heard of Core Keeper, um, it's kind of a game like Stardew Valley or Terraria or somewhere in between. It is a top down uh, cave exploration game where you play as these cute little buddies and you explore a, an underground world trying to figure out i guess how to get out or how to restore an ancient civilization or something let's start a new world and just dive right in uh, we'll call this youtube with a two because i already have a world called youtube i just started this new character i call him brooke don't ask me why i don't remember <laughs> Okay, so I guess we don't get the intro, but, um, so I have a little bit of an inventory. I actually just joined a friend who was streaming this, uh, Recon GT, shout out. Uh, he was just trying this for the first time over on Twitch, and, uh, I hopped into his world for a little bit to say hi. Um, but yeah, so when you spawn in, you're at this core that seems powered down, and, uh, the very first thing you do, of course, is try to free it. Now, one fun fact for those who have played this game before. If you break this piece of wood right here, it gets rid of the little tendril that's attached to the core, and it never grows back. So for funsies, I'm actually gonna try to leave that there on each side to leave like the spiny, the spiny little roots on the core itself. But when you first get into this game, the very first thing you kind of do, I guess, is run around punching wood, and then uh, if you pause your game or bring up your inventory, you have this little crafting menu that you can craft torches at, a wooden pickaxe, a wooden shovel, and a workbench. So a workbench and the chest is always good to start off with. I'll put the workbench uh, right here for now. At the workbench you can craft basic gear, you can craft some, some armor, uh, you can craft a watering can when you get some copper, you can craft a furnace if you get some walls, which we'll go ahead and punch some walls, um, a feeding tray for animals, and then the next level workbench. I guess we'll build some bridges too. We're gonna be uh, exploring in a little bit. We might need to cross some water. Uh, if you're brand new to playing this game on PC, if you hold shift whenever you have anything equipped, like right now I have a uh, pickaxe equipped, if I hold shift it will actually pull out my torch for the duration of me holding shift. We're gonna go ahead and clean up our little area here. I think that's everything. And now I want to make a furnace right away because the furnace is eventually what's going to be used to help get um, better ores and stuff like copper. We need 20 walls. I'm going to go ahead and put those in my hot bar so we can just see what our count is. And I started as, a, I think, a farmer or something so I get food rations when I start. And I have a copper pickaxe, but if I use it up and break it, then I'm not going to be able to fix it just yet. Let's go ahead and break 20 walls. Now, if you punch the walls like I am, it's much slower than using a pickaxe, but um, you gain experience for every time you hit a breakable wall and start to break it. So for every wall, I'm gonna gain, as you can see, plus one mining. I'll, I'll gain a little bit more XP than if I was just cutting through the walls. Or rather, I'm getting more XP per wall piece. It's still, you know, one incremental piece of XP per hit. It's just that I'm, I have to hit the walls more just to get through them. All right, one more is gonna do it so we can make a furnace. Go on back over to our workbench here. And here we go, we have a furnace. Go ahead and place that right over here. So once we have copper stuff to put in there, we can uh, start refining it. Now I have this fungal soil that I got while playing with recon that we'll find as we explore. Um, that is used to spawn mushrooms and mushroom enemies. So I'm just gonna make a little fenced off area here. I'm gonna get rid of these seeds I have. Just fence off a little area back here. We'll grow some uh, little mushroom buddies. Whoops. Put a mushroom on the wall over the fences. Doo -doo. 
I don't have a gate or anything, but that's okay. Let's toss these down here. When I get a little bit more, we'll get more. Okay. Now, I did build a chest as well. I'm just going to put the chest, uh, I guess, right along this thing over here. And I'll put all my extra stuff in here. So, the fences I don't need. Uh, the milk I didn't mean to find yet. And everything else we're going to kind of find as we go along. So, I'll keep it. Now, once you have kind of cleaned up this area, you really have to go exploring. So, what I like to do is I just like to um, mine in all the directions leading away from the core. And I guess now I'll use my pickaxe because it's going to take forever if I don't. I'm just going to mine to the left. And every so often I'll bring out my torch so that it fills in my map. If you tunnel through the darkness, it doesn't actually show that you're discovering the places. Now, if you look in the walls there, you see all this shiny stuff. It's actually where you find the stuff to put in the furnace. Oh, that's a new sound. Okay, we got a different kind of wall. So, I think that's new. Or newer. How the different walls sound different. I don't think they've always sounded like that. But yeah, so I should go and try to hit some of those uh, shinier things. We're actually approaching some right now. There's a room above as well, as well we could go to, but for now I'm just going to go and try to mine some of this shiny stuff. So now it'll say in the corner, new item, copper ore. The ores go in your furnace. They allow you to smelt the ores into bars that you can use to craft stuff. So the copper pickaxe I have at the bottom there, for example, is used or is made using copper. So if we get copper bars, we can either make another one, or we can actually fix this one when it starts to get worn out. Keep on digging to the left for now. Watch my little eyeballs in the dark here. I could, of course, put torches down as I go. I've never really been the type to do that, though. I couldn't tell you why. It would be smarter, I guess, to put torches in all the pathways so people could see where they're going if they ever were to join my game or something like that, but... It's just little on me. I know all my paths are... At least starting out, they're all pretty straight. Like I said, I'm trying to pull out my torch every so often just to mark off my map. The swirling stuff right in front of us, if we can see in the minute, it's actually water. Oh, we found a little mushroom buddy. Hello. These guys are pretty tame. So when it comes to enemies, you see how it said plus one melee? You gain XP every time you hit an enemy. So, every time you make contact with them. So, I kind of just whacked that guy in the face. And you can see that here's where some of this mushroom fungus is. That's where he came from. Bring some of this back to the little... The core. The base. See if we can, uh... Grow some mushroom buddies of our own. Okay, and I guess we can keep going to the left here. My mining skill keeps going up. As you gain skills, they will show up in this tree here. And then once you get over five points in any skill, you'll actually get some points on here that you could put into a skill tree. I'm not going to bother with that just yet, but as we keep going, we'll uh, level up pretty quickly, I think, in the beginning, at least for the first handful of levels, and uh, we'll be able to get some skills that make navigating and fighting and stuff a little bit easier. I posted a, a YouTube short or a TikTok about how to level up all your skills in this game, and I've mentioned a few of them already, you know, punching the walls or damaging walls running as I just gained it's uh based on how many tiles you travel over but only on foot there's different vehicles and stuff you can ride in this game and they don't uh, they don't contribute to your running total shocking I know there's a fishing stat that will give you credit for everything you pull in um, when you pull in objects, they, they reel in right away. But if you pull in something like a fish, there's a little mini game you have to play before it fills in or reels in. 
So it's actually faster to uh, just pull up garbage, as it turns out. Okay, um, I guess I'll store the different wall types for now. We have 24 copper ore, so we can pop that right in here. It'll start to make copper bars ever so slowly. Uh, we have our little garden here. I'm going to put some more mushroom fungus in. I guess we can make another one of those little gardens over here while we wait for our copper to come to. One more. New item, ring of stone. So every so often you'll find rings or necklaces. And your character over here has a bunch of accessory slots. So you'll see there's a helmet, a, um, a chest piece, a pants, a lantern slot, which this is relatively new. You used to just have one um, hand slot or offhand slot that lanterns would go in. But now they have their own dedicated slot. A bag to expand your inventory. A pet if you find them eventually. Um, and then you have your necklaces and rings. So this says you get an extra 14 mining damage if it's in your ring slot. So now I should be able to punch walls and break them a little bit easier. Let's see, it was like four or five hits before. Now it's only three. So there you go. We got a little boost to our uh, mining stat. We're gonna go ahead and take these extra fences. And I just wanna extend this out a little bit. I'm not much of a designer when it comes to uh, playing games like this my first core keeper save file everything was just a huge eyesore a huge mess <laughs> don't really have the patience to design stuff in games like this personally i usually will just play games like this because i enjoy the uh well the gameplay who knew um but yeah so i apologize in advance for the uh shoddiness of all my designs all right we'll put the extra fungus and uh, fences and stuff in here and then we're gonna keep finding stuff like dirt and whatever as we go, so. So I just went all the way to the left and we ran out of room, so I'm gonna go straight down now and do the same thing. Um, my pickaxe here is getting a little weak. You can see this little red bar is uh, on its last leg. With five copper bar, we can get something called a salvage and repair station. We've got well more, or way more than five right now. We'll go ahead and make a salvage and repair station. And uh, we can also make a cooking pot or a feeding tray. Um, we'll take the cooking pot first. We'll talk about cooking in a little bit. But now with our salvage and repair station, we'll go ahead and put this down. Uh, who cares? We'll put it right next to here. And when you interact with it, you get this little window here. So if you put anything in this salvaging area, you can get rid of it and you'll get scrap and stuff in return. Um, we don't really have anything worth scrapping yet. We haven't really found all that much extra stuff. You also have these repair and reinforce options. So if I hover over my copper pickaxe, it says I need a piece of scrap parts to repair it. Um, so you get scrap parts by scrapping items. I don't know if I can scrap, can I scrap food ration? No. Um, and then you can reinforce if you have copper in this case, which basically just gives it a second health bar. Is there anything I can scrap? I mean, I could scrap that ring I just found, but it's helping me mine a little bit. I guess for the sake of showing it off, we can do that. We'll get another one. So when I hit this, you'll see that I got one scrap part. How incredible. So with this scrap part, if I click this repair hammer and I go over to my pickaxe, it'll use the scrap part to repair the pickaxe. Now if I go to reinforce, it'll take my one copper bar and give it a second health bar. You can do this with all of your gear. You can do that with your rings and stuff. Or not your rings, I'm sorry. You can do that with your um, helmet, chest, and pants. Reinforce, repair, etc. Um, but yeah, so now we have an extra durable pickaxe for now. And at the cost of my ring. But that's okay. I just found that ring in a wall. We'll find more. Okay, so we also made this cooking pot right here. And at the cooking pot, you can put two pieces of food in that will craft something else. So you can put one food of one type and a food of a different type here. Of course, I can't cook the food rations, but you can also put two of the same food and they will produce a new food. Cooking is one of the best ways to give yourself temporary stat boosts in this game. I also have a YouTube short slash TikTok about this, but essentially combining different foods gives you different benefits. So you'll see here, this is probably the worst example we can see. But eating a mushroom gives you plus 9 on your food bar up here. 
as well as plus 2.1 health for every or every second for 20 seconds so you can gain about 40 some health with that when you eat two mushrooms combined together it essentially doubles uh the effect so for mushrooms it's not really that big of a difference it's like eating two mushrooms in a row but uh if you combine say something that gives you a speed boost with something that gives you armor you can have one food that does both instead of having to eat you know like a, a karak and a bomb pepper or whatever they are but anyway food the food bar gives you buffs and debuffs if you're hungry you'll see that you get reductions on things re reduced health that's why this bar is cut off um, reduced damage and reduced movement speed so you'll see that i'm kind of sauntering along because i'm hungry but if we go ahead and eat this mushroom stuff this bar will start to go up i'm actually gonna eat all four of them just to fill this up and you'll see that we get temporary boosts because our food bar is really high now i'm zipping along a little bit faster than i was so we're gonna keep uh going down like i said i like to go in all four directions just to try and explore my map. Along the way, we'll go and get some more copper and stuff. So if you look at my pickaxe down here, you'll see that that second health bar is going down pretty slow, actually. Been drilling through a handful of walls already and uh, doing okay. Our mining skill is going up because we're still hitting a bunch of walls. Oh, and I just hit another um, mushroom guy. So we'll fight him. I'm not going to use my pickaxe as a weapon though because it's going to kind of waste its durability but we'll just kind of punch him out and he'll hit me too you guys are kind of easy to bait they run into the walls and everything and take damage they run into each other apparently they also announce every time they're about to charge at you so a little squeak. I'll let you know they're coming. They actually weren't in the game at the at uh, launch either. They're kind of a newer enemy. Oh, and I think I see a meadow over there. I don't think I know. We also see an X on the ground right here. If you have a shovel, which you can craft with four wood, you can actually dig these and they contain little goodies or seeds that one just had a seed over here we have a meadow this is actually part of one of the newer updates in core keeper um they added these little cattle that you can feed and they will drop different things like milk or i think wool or similar things what is this marbled meat oh i think these guys actually took out one of the uh cattle Yeah, when you kill the cattle, you get meats. Um, but if you feed them, they end up dropping stuff. Ones that look like cows drop milk, unsurprisingly. Ones that look like sheep. I think they just drop a type of wool, like I was saying earlier. Maybe they drop their horns or something. Uh, we have some food. So we can give food to these. Or I think if you talk... Or approach them when you have food, they'll actually start following you around. Like so. So if we get this guy over here to follow us. Oh, we got all we got four of them. We can get them all to come home with me if I'm patient enough. I don't know if I am, but we can try to be. Yeah, so as long as you're holding food, they're gonna try to come eat it. And you can use this to your advantage to uh, coax them all to follow you back to your base. Now, on my main save file, I never did this because, well, if you live in an existing world, the uh, meadow biome doesn't actually spawn this close to the center. So you'd have to venture out to the late, late game biomes and walk this slowly all the way back home. And of course, they all lost interest when I pulled out my torch, so we have to uh, make sure we're holding the mushrooms. You can trust that they're all following me because, well, we can't actually see for ourselves that that's happening. Now, this is why you build the uh, animal feeding trays. Oh, we lost one. Come on now. 
This is why you build the uh, animal feeding trays. It's so that you could put an endless amount of food into those trays and actually have these animals um, eat from them and stay full. And when they're full, they produce the various things that they make. So I'll just make a little animal pen over here. Um, I have to make some more. Um, what's it called? I have to make some more fence pieces to fence them in, but that's okay. Got quite a bit of uh, wood here. My scrap pieces we found away. And we will just uh, put some torches on the wall. Some fences up. This guy's blocking the fences, but that's okay. Oopsies. Double oopsies. Well, let's see if we can't get them all in here. Hey, wake up. Hung this animal is hungry for plants. Can we wake it up? Oh, it woke up. Alright, come here. Wait, I heard one crunch. How did it crunch? Are we hearing that? How is it crunching? Is it saying they're eating... Oops, that sound was me. Oops, sorry. I'm just trying to break the fence. Come here. Come here. I'm here. Okay, thank you. You are now my captives. Enjoy. Now, we will get a feeding trough for them eventually. This animal is hungry for plants. Oh, okay, so now I'm standing still. They actually eat the plant out of my hand. Happy, fairly full, and producing. So he'll eventually drop something. Yeah, that's why you want to make those animal feeding trays. So you just put food that you get in there for them. Put our ore in here. Uh, marbled meat when eaten. 13 food, 2.6 health every second, and can be cooked. So if I get more mushrooms, we'll uh, try cooking with that. I'll put that in the cooking pot for now. So to make the copper workbench, which has higher level gear, we need six copper bars and eight pieces of wood. Of course, we already can make this with what little we have. So we'll go ahead and we'll make this. Now, in one of the later updates of Core Keeper, they made it so that the benches all stack. So if you have a higher level bench, you'll be able to cycle down to the previous level benches, which I will demonstrate in a moment. So if we go here, you'll see that there's arrows on the side here. You can actually scroll back to the wooden workbench and make all the different wooden stuff you might have missed like the feeding tray or the watering can and uh, here we have our copper gear so we could make a copper pickaxe for only two copper bar and four wood we can upgrade our shovel we can make a fishing rod we can make a belt pocket which I think is really just a backpack but hey um, or we can do a, a permanent lantern, which I would love because I would like to glow instead of having to pull my torch out all the time. Bunch of other stuff. We can't really afford to make any of it though because it requires things like glass or fiber and all this stuff we haven't really seen. Actually, I have fiber right here, but not enough. Now, another thing that we have is uh, seeds. But no way to water them yet. So we'll take our copper come here and we'll go back to the first table we can make a watering can so the watering can needs to be filled you have to find a water source uh, we found a couple not really all that close to here but uh, if you can find a water source that's close you can fill up your watering can like so and you can use it to plant and water some seeds Now, I think you have to hoe the ground before you plant seeds. So we'd have to make a hoe as well. Right click on the water to fill your watering can. You'll see that the bar gets filled up with blue. We'll just head on back to where we were and I'll see what it costs to make a gardening hoe because I don't remember. But every time you find, or almost every time you find, um, seeds in the wild or berries and stuff in the wild they'll drop seeds so you bring the seeds home with you and make plants there we go i just built a hoe the gardening hoe will let you cultivate the ground unsurprisingly 
we'll just kind of carve out a little area over here. It's real easy to get a lot of uh, roots and stuff that you want to plant right away. Map has really clear out this little section here. Okay, and then we'll just use our new hoe. I'm actually going to put some torches down. And this hoe actually does a 2x2 two two little grid. So, with it out, if you right click, you can obviously build the ground. Then with the ground tilled, you can put your seeds down by right clicking. And then with the watering can, you can just water every individual spot and it will grow into a plant. You only have to water them once, even though there are multiple stages of growing. Just one set of watering should let it grow the entire way. So, um, I think this has been a pretty decent kind of intro to the game. Of course, we didn't really see that many enemies. We just saw the little mushroom people. But, uh, we have a pickaxe. I think I can get a sword or something for combat. Um, yeah, here, or you can make the anvil. Which, the copper anvil is right here. But that's where you can start making, as it says, uh, armor for looks in combat. I think that's also where you start making swords, like the copper sword. Um, for combat, but you could always make a wooden sword to start. We went over basic combat. We went over digging briefly, <laughs> and gardening, and cooking, and traveling, and mining, and just kind of an intro session in Core Keeper. A whole lot left to do, but uh, we've got some little pets here already. We've got a little mob farm that's not producing anything. Got all kinds of little stuff, just in one quick and dirty little intro. We'll put all of our extra stuff away, like I don't need the hoe and the watering can on me when I run around. Or my copper, we'll keep that nice and safe. I'll keep my scrap parts safe, my my fence. And uh, I'm gonna move everything around in a way that makes a little bit more sense. But that's it, that's been uh, one episode of Core Keeper. So if you enjoyed this little intro, uh, Feel free to come on back for more. We'll keep recording some videos like this because Core Keeper is one of my favorite little chill games um, that I feel like not enough people really know about. So uh, if you like this, maybe check out the game. Maybe tell a friend. This, of course, can be played multiplayer with up to, I think, four or eight people. Um, I've only ever played, I think, with two or three other people at once. But it's a lot of fun with friends. It's a lot of fun alone. And uh, yeah, we'll keep on playing this. But if you're watching so far, I appreciate you for watching. Uh, if you like content like this, feel free to check out the rest of my channel and or my Twitch page. I stream games just like this and many others all the time. Uh, but I thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I hope you take care. Bye now.